I am not here to be Queen of the Ashes. Remember the last episode when Drogon was burning the King's Landing to the ground? Remember how it crumbled to pieces, decimating, crying, and yearning for help? Well, it wasn't actually King's Landing that you were forced to believe. It was actually the show's writing. I fail to understand those people who are still trying to defend the show, telling everyone that people are disappointed because they didn't get what they wanted, and that they read too many of those circulating theories. Well, how about no? I'll try to break down the characters of GOT and how they behaved this entire season that was contrary to the normal, natural route that their respective character arcs were taking and how the sole motivation of the showrunners to take decisions was to subvert expectations. We hope to kind of avoid the expected and Jon Snow has always been the hero, the one who's been the savior, but it just didn't seem right to us for this, for this moment. Where are my dragons? The whole burn them all character arc was inevitable and I'm not at all questioning it. It's a progression of events that led us to it that's thoroughly disappointing. And don't confuse character development with foreshadowing. Yes, the show dropped close to the Mad Queen storyline. Yes, Khaleesi's lust for power was evident from the very first episode. But her flipping over the sanity hill in the course of two episodes is downright lazy writing. I will answer injustice with justice. Dracarys. One episode, she's fighting for the living. And the next, she's killing them all for no apparent reason. And if we talk about reasons, she lost Rhaegal, Missandei, and Jon Snow is more lovable by the crowd and is a rightful heir to the Iron Throne. <laughs> well, she lost her loved ones before and that never made her the Mad Queen. She burned the ones responsible for the deaths, but never innocence. Cersei's army, surrendering was enough of a reason for her to stop the carnage. And Jon Snow, he was loved by his people, the people who fought beside him. The Dothrakis would never want Jon Snow on the Iron Throne, would they? We should know him to blame when the sky falls down upon them. Well, there's hardly anything relevant Snow did this season apart from reaffirming his love for the Queen. What you command, we will obey. While she is she is my queen. And acting dumb at war tactics. The only relevant thing he could have done was pet ghosts, but nope. All the CGI work had to go to burning the show to the ground. The character got sidelined and with it the show's spectacular history that R.R. Martin created. The moment the show's bad writing took front stage. Power resides where men believe it resides. It's a trick, a shadow on the wall. And a very small man can cast a very large shadow. How to define these two? The most intellectual minds of Westeros taking probably the worst decisions in the history of Westeros. Right from the moment Tyrion became Hand of the Queen, his character reduced to throwing lame insults at Varys. At least your balls won't freeze off. Taking a stroll on the battlefield as Drogon lays waste to it. and giving the worst possible advice to his queen, as if it's done on purpose. If I have underestimated our enemies... Our enemies? Your family, you mean? Oh, the monster... The man who made people dance to his wits is long dead, and I won't even care if he dies in the last episode. ...and just now kings are dying like flies. And Varys? His birds have probably joined the Night King. Oh wait, he's dead. 
What do you want? Episode 5 started with him warning Jon Snow about the coming carnage, followed by a frame of him writing to one of his birds, followed by him being burnt alive. The way his character arc completed is downright funny. It was like the showrunner just fast forwarded the scenes because they couldn't watch the carnage they wrote, which is totally understandable. Tracaris. Tracaris. So now we come to the most tragic hero of the show, probably the most victimized. He takes decades to prepare an army, only to get killed in seconds by a stab, a fucking stab. No combat, no fight, a fucking stab. Heck, even the mountain was more difficult to get rid of. But mind you, that's no ordinary stab. It took nearly four years to prepare an assassin to kill the Night King. Seems confusing, right? So the Night King's superpowers were him smiling from a distance, giving cold, empty stares. Seasons of build-up got killed by a lust of subverting expectations because yes, nobody would see that coming. Of course yes, nobody would see that coming because it fucking sucks. So many sacrifices seem pointless and all those fears too when people made your ears bleed with their Winter is Coming slogan hoopla. Winter is coming. Winter is coming! Winter is coming for him. And winter is coming! The Night King turns out to be a joke. The whole long night was a joke. Why Night King wanted Bran? Why the fuck Bran walked into a crow and stayed there for the entirety of the episode? What tactics did the living use to face the dead? What was the point of the Dothraki charge? Well, the people acted surprised when the Dothrakis were killed off. Did they expect the army of the dead to disappear with fire-charged weapons that aren't even Valyrian? Or maybe they did, because it was D&D who were behind it all. It all appeared like a facade, especially if you think the Night King was supposed to be the main antagonist that people feared for the thousands of years. And then the falling threat was supposed to be... It was like the Batman was forced to face someone like Scarecrow after he had just defeated the Joker. <laughs> Lastly, while the show's writing was fed to the D&D shitstorm this season, we can all take a moment to appreciate how beautifully crafted some of its scenes and frames were. The dragons never look more daunting, powerful, and even graceful, barring the fact that they literally burn the show to the ground. But let's hope the show redeems itself by a good finale. Let's hope the show leaves us with something worthy that stays edged in our memories. As they say, a good end makes a good story worth telling. <laughs>